Welcome to this quick demonstration of AppMaker by Isoperla. We'll start off by adding a new app and we give it a name in the settings panel, click the little tick and go into design mode. So have a quick look at the uh, settings panel and this is for the app itself, so this is the top level settings. But each page in the app also has a set of settings as well. And uh, we can change the background image, we can add our own image, or we can add a preset image, such as that one there. Uh, or we could add a web page, uh, but in this case we'll just set it to be blank. There we go. Right, we'll start off by dragging on uh, a control. And uh, that's our little toolbar on the left, we can scroll up and down on it. And we'll drag on an image. There we go. And we can move the image around with a two finger drag, like that. And we can size it using the sizing controls to make it bigger. And uh, I can size it off to the left a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. And click on it to select it, and then go into the settings panel again. And you can see the XY, which is the position, and the width and the height of the control. And here we can, for an image, we can set the image we want. We can set some multiple images if we want as well, like that. And then if we click the little done button, that's ended design mode and we go into run mode and we can see in run mode we can move between our, our images uh, in the usual way. Back into design mode again and here we're going to add uh, an edit box which is standard iOS control again and select it, drag it, there we go, let's put it there, let's make it a little bit wider, there we are and again go into the settings panel for it and you can see there's some options there which we can change the relationship between the the size of the label and the size of the enterable field but normally probably you won't want to do that so let's set it back to just medium and we can uh, put in uh, a label for this edit box and we'll put this, uh, set this to be name and in the default value we'll set the value that we want to appear now often for an edit box you won't want anything in there but in this case we'll set it to, uh, to Albert Einstein and then we'll drag across uh, a, a segmented control this is a standard iOS control and again using the what we'll do here is we'll use the settings for the uh, edit box as a guide for our segmented control. So you see the X position is 327 and its width is 462. So if I now go back to the segmented control and set the X position to the same as the edit box and set the length to the same as the edit box, you'll see that it magically makes it the same uh, well, put it in the same position basically. And then I can nudge it down using one of the nudge controls, and that just positions it a little bit, a uh, little bit lower. I can hide the toolbars so they don't um, overlap it, and I can go into the control itself and set it up with uh, a handy label like department, a default value, which for a segmented control is the value that's highlighted and the list of possible values which uh, go into the placeholder field which I could set to um, three different departments and physics being the one in the middle which is the same as the default value which means that that one is the one that's selected so I'll unhide the toolbars click done go into run mode and you'll see that we can change this segmented control but the default value for it was physics and I can also change the edit box value if I want to as well. So there we are, that's the app running. Let's go back to the uh, design mode and let's drag on a notepad field. Now notepad fields are just really big edit 
boxes so they have very similar functionality quite often they use it to just display text as opposed to allowing text to be entered um, and here I'll put in a, a label of details now I could copy and paste a whole bunch of text out of uh, a web browser into here which makes uh, entering a large amount of text quite easy but in this case I'll just I'll just type in some little sentence about Albert Einstein let's say he was a physics uh, expert let's put that what I'll also do here is set it to read only just to show you that um, this field is can't be changed by the user there we are so now if I go into run mode again just have a little look at it you'll see that although a user can tap in it and copy and paste out of it it can't actually change the text in it and that's because the read only flag was set the read only field okay so let's uh, try cloning a field I'll clone this field and when you clone a field using that button there the new copy sits right on top of the old copy so at the moment you can't even see where it is but it's actually on top of that one so I'll drag the new one I created out of the way and to below the old one and that's cloning and you can do that with any field and I'll drag on a, uh, a standard iOS picker control this is similar to the segmented control we looked at earlier on but it's used for longer lists usually so it's where you've got um, you know half a dozen or more items in a list but in this case I'll just set it to uh, three values and let's just set it for the salary and we'll make it low medium and high there we are now that doesn't look great uh, so what I'll do I'll change the default value to medium this is the standard iOS control this is just the way they look there we are and also with this I could change where that label is at the moment it's, it's above the control uh, but I could shift it across to the side of it like that although that's not great because it's too short if I set it to medium length there we are so that's now at the side of that control or I could just hide it all together so the label is hidden there we are okay now let's drag on one last thing which is uh, a button so let's drag it onto there and we'll make it a little bit wider there we are and I'll use this button to create an email I think uh, we can use it for several things moving between pages is the classic example uh, so you can go forward backwards to the first page to the last page but in this case I'll, uh, I'll use the button to create an email just by setting that to uh, the action to email and optionally I can put in a default email address for it to go to and a default email subject and even if I want to uh, some default text there we go now if a user presses that button during run mode it will generate an email there we go okay so if I now go back to run mode I can see my more complete app there we are and I've just noticed that I forgot to set the page title there so let's just set that so that's in the page settings and in there I can change the page title to employee there we are and what I'll do is I'll add another page now any app can have uh, many pages and so I'll add another page here and we can sweep between pages using the sweep gesture or using the left right buttons at the top and I'll drag on a, uh, a date picker this is, again is a standard iOS control and in this case what I'll do is uh, set the label and set the default value and in this case I'll set it to I can't remember his date of birth off the top of my head it's something like that and there we go it's it's uh, set it to that date but we could, the user could change that date so that's a date picker and then when I run the app I can just move between pages and uh, 
And there we are.